Well, to get more perspective on the situation, we have invited Professor Yushika Herrera back with us today. Welcome back. She's a professor of comparative okay. politics and international relations at UW-Madison. Welcome back again. Hi, Yushiko. Good to see you. Hi, thanks. Why would Russia invade Ukraine? Yeah, this is still the big question. Um, there were many off-ramps last week in the, la in the last couple of months um, to avoid this, but um, the situation changed dramatically last week um, when it became clear that they were going to do some kind of action in the East, starting with the recognition of um, independence of two regions of Ukraine. Um, it's still a big question, uh, but if you listen to Putin's speech, as I did yesterday, um, there is a kind of paranoid fear of NATO. I think that's a big part of it. The other is just a total disrespect for Ukrainian sovereignty. Um, he, you know, essentially argued in his speech that NATO was planning an attack via Ukraine on Russia and that that had to be stopped. So um, I think there's quite a bit of uh, a fear, unfounded fear, um, and just a, a lack of connection with reality, unfortunately, on, well, on Putin's part. Well, how wide, widespread do you think this conflict could get? Are, are we looking at the possibility of war in Europe? Well, as things unfolded over, over the weekend and yesterday, um, you know, there's a hopeful scenario that Russia currently controls about one third of these two regions, which they, they claimed as independent states yesterday. So the hopeful scenario might have been, and perhaps still is, is that they send, they have, and they have moved troops in, but so far they are in the Russian controlled areas of those two regions. So to some extent that would be a bit of the status quo in the sense that they wouldn't be going farther than they already control and that wouldn't entail new fighting. Um, but the first, the first issue would be if they cross the line of control into the remainder of Luhansk and Donetsk regions, that's going to entail actual fighting. And then moving further into Ukraine or possibly from the north, from Belarus into Kiev would, would also expand the, the war. I don't, I don't think most people see this as expanding beyond Ukraine. And most people don't think NATO troops would actually engage with Russian troops, um, but rather that it would be confined to a Russia-Ukraine um, conflict. So the, the threat for the wider Europe, um, for wider areas of Europe is still relatively low. However, today, NATO troops were sent um, as sort of reinforcements into the Baltic states and other NATO countries just, just to be on the safe side. You think the sanctions that President Biden announced today will be effective? Um, they are a signal of possibly something to come. I think the biggest news in sanctions was Germany cutting off support for opening up Nord Stream 2, which is the, the new big gas pipeline. Um, but I think as a first start, today's and yesterday's sanctions are not are not not that um, significant, but it's possible that that's a signal of of more to come. Europe has already started sanctioning individuals. Um, the UK has sanctioned some individuals. Um, some banks have been sanctioned. So this could just well, President Biden said this is the first tranche, and um, I don't think in itself it's that that. Um, significant just yet, but it, it could become so. The eyes of the world will keep a close eye on what's going on over there. Thanks for being with us today. Yoshiko, great to see you. I'm sure we'll have you back very soon. Thanks so much for your perspective. You're welcome. Thank you.